The simple idea that when anyone can contribute to a solution, everyone benefits is beginning to transform everything around us. This shared problem solving is the core value driving openness in software, data, and increasingly the physical objects that we interact with every day. It may seem obvious at first that sharing information is a good thing. We are, after all, at an event promoting ideas worth spreading. But in practice, the open distribution of information and technology has not always been encouraged. If we believe the ancient Greeks, this trend goes all the way back to the very first technology, fire. Everyone here is probably familiar with the story of Prometheus, who stole fire from the gods to share it with mankind. Unfortunately, the gods weren't so keen to share and sent their patent lawyer, Eagle, to extract just compensation in the form of his liver. Fast forward a thousand years, and two Irish saints literally went to war with each other over the right to copy a book. In the end, St. Columbus was prevented from copying the book and exiled. In the, centuries, in the centuries since that first copyright case, the trend to lock up information has only increased. Then came the internet and made it really easy for us to share just about any information we could think of with people all over the world. Unfortunately, early attempts to share protected content online ended pretty badly. Think of peer-to-peer -peer music sharing on Napster. But recently, the creation of new works specifically made and licensed for sharing and the opening up of the design, production, and financing processes are revolutionizing everything about the way we collectively make all the things around us. As a scientist, my first foray into making things better naturally started in the laboratory. During my postdoc at the University of Tokyo, I saw a colleague hand wiring each microscopic pin of a chip like the one you see here that's used to record brain waves. There were some companies making them, but as specialty items, the prices were astronomical, so he decided to roll his own. It took him about a week to produce a single unit. I knew there had to be a better way, so we looked around and we found software that allows anyone to produce pro professional quality circuit boards on their own. About an hour later, we had the very first prototype you see here. A week after that, we had 100 units delivered at a cost of about $2 per board. It now takes him 30 minutes to produce a unit instead of a week. We thought, wow, this is really great, and it's going to save us hundreds, if not thousands, of man hours. So let's share it with other scientists who might be able to benefit from it, too. We posted the designs online so that anyone can download them, make them themselves, and improve upon if they wish. Turns out, other scientists were starting to share their tools as well. For just about every instrument in the laboratory, we were able to find a low-cost, open-source alternative that anyone can download, make themselves, and even help develop. All at a fraction of typical commercial solutions. The barriers are now low enough that anyone can become a citizen scientist by building the tools for experimentation right in their own garage on a tiny budget. During that time in Japan, I learned that enabling regular citizens to do the science that matters most to them can have a really big impact. After Fukushima, everybody was pretty sure that official sources were fudging the radiation numbers. So regular citizens started finding novel ways to monitor radiation themselves. I put a tiny sticker on my train card so that it would go with me everywhere I went and measure my cumulative exposure. Other citizens started pooling together and buying Geiger counters. Unfortunately, the Geiger counters that were available quickly became scarce and really expensive. So a group of citizens took it upon themselves to develop a low-cost, open-source alternative, which is the safe cast units you see here. The first prototype was developed in about a week. Within months, hundreds of these units were deployed all across Japan, and mobile units were being placed on cars and bikes to, to collect data as they traveled through the cities. They also created software to collect and visualize all this data. What you see here is the SafeCast map, which is continually being updated to this day. 
It now represents more than 23 million data points collected over 400,000 kilometers of roadways. It's the most complete radiological monitoring project in the world, and it was all done using open software, open hardware, and powered by regular citizens. So this was getting really interesting, but citizen science is maybe only interesting for nerds like me. But it turns out that solutions are being shared for a broad range of issues. Not only can you download the equipment for your own mad scientist garage lab, you can download the garage and the entire house too. These are WikiHouse kits. They're open source kits that were developed by professional architects with community feedback and participation. And anyone can download these today completely free of charge. All you need to do is pick the module that you want to build, then you cut the parts from plywood on a special computer controlled machine called a CNC router and assemble them into real buildings that can come together without screws, nails, or power tools. Aside from that router, no specialized tools or woodworking knowledge are required. That sounds really great, but not everybody has a CNC router at home to be able to cut these pieces. However, a lot of people live really close to one of the 400 fab labs around the world, like the one right here in El Paso. And each of those fab labs has advanced tools like CNC routers, laser cutters, and 3D printers that anyone can come and use. You can use those tools to build the DIY open source house of your dreams. And if the plans that are provided don't suit your needs specifically, you're totally free to modify them to suit your individual needs. And hopefully, share those new solutions so that someone in a fab lab on the complete other side of the world can make it and improve on it as well. As perfect as your DIY house may be, you may occasionally need to go outside. And when you do, you no longer have to feel guilty about jumping in a gas guzzler because there's an open source electric vehicle for that too. You may have heard that GM now claims that you cannot own your car. You can only license it due to the proprietary software that runs the engine. In contrast, this electronic vehicle was made to suit your particular needs and be totally customizable. You can make it two-door, four-door. You can make it a truck or an off-road vehicle. It's entirely up to you, and it can be built using standard shop tools. The future of global transportation will likely be run by small electric vehicles like this one, and you can build one today for probably less than you pay in interest on the gas guzzler in your garage. With shelter and transport covered, the other basic human need is food. And of course, there's an open source solution for that too. With desertification and urbanization picking up pace around the world, food security is, being, is becoming an increasingly important topic, especially in food deserts and actual deserts like El Paso. So Fab Lab El Paso teamed up with a global design team to produce these acre kits, which allow anybody to become an urban farmer, even with limited space and a limited budget. Like many open projects, these acre kits were pre predominantly designed by a global team of strangers who collaborate entirely online. But anybody concerned about food security can become part of the process. In fact, these kits would have been impossible without the shared knowledge of experts from various fields, including farmers and beekeepers, designers and architects, who collectively are much better experts in their areas of expertise than any of us could be individually as designers. And what that allowed us to do is maximize the efficiency of these kits, both in terms of materials and energy. These are all designed to fit on a single sheet of plywood that you can get just about anywhere. And by shipping and by, by designing globally and manufacturing locally at fab labs and makerspaces around the world, we save on the ecological costs of shipping wood instead of shipping ideas, right? So we transfer files instead of stuff. This project started a short four months ago, but already hundreds of people have downloaded the files, and many of them, shown here on this acre map, 
have already started to produce, to turn those files into real hits, deploy them all over the world, and start producing sustainably grown local food. So I've, showed, I've shared with you a couple of examples of how this open development process and shared problem solving is contributing to some of these big picture issues, right? Housing, transportation, food production, crisis response. But it's not just those big issues that stand to benefit. Every aspect of our daily lives stands to benefit from shared problem solving. So I encourage every single one of you to think about that little problem, that little issue that solving would help improve your life even just a tiny bit. Share your problem. Share your solution. You might be, in, you might be surprised at how many other people and how many other places are dealing with exactly the same questions and how by collaborating on the solutions, you can find a better way forward. So go out, go to your fab lab, make something, and most importantly, make a difference. Thank you.